Basically, how do you get these things to work? <laughs> Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop and this is the dresser I'm working on. If this is the first time you've been to a video working on the dresser, um, I have a whole playlist of the steps that I've taken thus far to get into the dresser. Um, on the last one, I had just gotten to the carcass and finishing that out, but on this one I actually want to go into how do you make these drawers, how do you fit them, how do you size them, and uh, make them functional. Uh, there's a lot more I still need to do after this, but uh, this video will cover that so far. So let's jump in. All of the sides, front and back, are made out of solid white oak, um, four quarter to five quarter thick. And this is a lot of fun. I love using this bow saw to, uh, to do the rough cutting. Uh, the cross cutting is fantastic with it. It's great for uh, green wood, but uh, when I just want to make a really quick, massive cut, it's the saw I use. Then I need to uh, rip it all down to length, add to the width, and uh, get them ready for the sides and back. The front, though, is a slightly different story because I didn't have enough figured wood that was wide enough um, to cover the entire front. And so what I ended up doing is splitting it down the middle. So every drawer is uh, divided into two pieces in the front, a, a top piece and a bottom piece. And that way I can have a lot of figure showing in the front and just add a little bit of a difference. And I'm kind of interested to see how this actually comes out in the end. But I'm really liking it so far. This means joining up all of these boards, so I need to actually joint one side of each of them to glue them together. And with all of this curl and figure, this became rather difficult. Um, curly white oak is uh, very, very difficult to, to, to actually plane down by hand. And it makes it very interesting and a lot of fun. But after joining them all up, I can make sure all the pieces fit and clamp them up nicely. I love these clamps. I don't know if I've said that enough, but uh, if you haven't seen it, I actually have a video on these clamps. and. Uh, they're just a lot of fun and make this portion of the work enjoyable. After they're all clamped up, I can then lay them all out and figure out where I want them to go in the dressers and then mark them. From this point on, all boards are marked and labeled so that I have a side, a face, a back for every drawer slot. I want to make sure that they all fit and size them precisely to their opening. And so here I'm just making sure where it's tight, what needs to be trimmed off, um, and actually marking each board to its drawer slot specifically for that slot so that everything is designed for its individual slot. I actually did a video on piston fitting the drawers and actually going through all of these. So if you want to see more detail on how I size these boards to the opening, um, you can watch the video on that. But once I make the marks, I can cut them to length, plane them down to their precise thickness and uh, width, and get them all ready for the joinery. Uh, I like to make sure that everything on these boards is just about as perfect as they can be before taking them to dovetails so that everything slides in nicely and every board fits precisely in its slot uh, so that everything is the way it should be. The last thing before doing dovetails is putting in the groove, and this is the groove where the bottom of the drawer will, uh, will fit. And normally this is a quarter by quarter by quarter, uh, but I'm actually making it a little bit deeper than a quarter inch so that there is some breathing room in these. I love using a 45 or 55 to make these grooves. Just makes it a lot of fun. On to the dovetail work. And I did a lot of dovetails on this. Um, 40 joints. But <laughs> doing that, I actually was able to make a couple videos on how I do dovetails. It's all freehand, it's all organic feeling, and uh, it's a fairly quick process um, when you think about hand tool joinery. but. Uh, a lot of fun and uh, a great way to spend some time in the shop. And after working them all out, I can make sure that they all fit and that every drawer works well together by itself. I love good joints. Now I need to make the bottoms of the drawers. And for these bottoms, um, I'm actually going to be making them out of solid white oak. And so they're all going to be book matched. So I need to resaw all of the bottoms in half. This is eight inch wide, um, one inch, white oak and this Rubo frame saw is the saw to use for resawing. It is so much fun. It's very quick. Leaves you with a really nice clean cut. Um, just a, a joy of a saw to use. Um, I've made several of these in the past. I actually just had a video where I made this one um, just before doing this this particular step and uh, yeah this is fun. <laughs> it doesn't look like it but it is a lot of fun. 26 feet I think it was worth of that 
<laughs> but after uh, book matching and gluing them together, I need to uh, fill some of the voids with epoxy. Um, I want to fill any of the wormholes or knots. And so I'm using this uh, West System epoxy with uh, some trans tint dye. I can mix it up and then add it to all of the knot holes and wormholes and uh, get it ready for uh, surfacing so that these can be used as drawer bottoms. Uh, this is something I've, I've recently started doing and I like doing it a lot more. With a little bit of uh, fire you can pop the, uh, the bubbles in them and get a really nice um, clean fill with the epoxy. And uh, happiness! <laughs> so now on to uh, flattening the drawer bottoms. They are slightly thicker than 3 8 at this point and I need to bring them down to 3 8 inch thick. And I will do a rough planing on both sides getting them relatively flat and I leave the bottom side of the drawer rough planed um, so that if someone pulls the drawer out they will see the rough planing on the bottom of the drawer. And then the upside I smooth it all out with a smoothing plane getting a really nice clean surface. At this point they are slightly under 3 8 inch thick but I need to actually then size them precisely to their individual drawers. So just like I sized each drawer to each slot, I'm sli sizing each bottom to match up with its drawer. So I'm sizing it to the panels that it will be fitting into. So I can mark on it its length and width, and then use a combination of saws and planes to bring it down precisely to its finished size. I'm leaving it about a quarter inch um, smaller than it needs to be so that it has some breathing room for expansion and contraction. Now to fit it into the groove, I test fit and see where it needs to have some taken off. And then I put the plane at a slight angle and bevel down the edge. Just uh, pillowing it a little bit um, and fitting it into that groove, making sure that it fits nicely all the way across. Then before assembly, I need to actually smooth the drawer, uh, the drawer bottom, uh, the top of the drawer bottom. Because at, after this, uh, you really won't be able to do much inside. It's uh, basically done. I use the card scraper to clean it all up and make it nice. Onto the glue up, I start by putting the two sides into the front face of the drawer. Um, I put glue on all um, joining surfaces, especially long grain to long grain. And then I slide the drawer bottom in. I do not glue the drawer bottom in. Uh, I don't put glue anywhere on it because I want it to uh, float in there. And so as expansion and contraction occur over the years, it will have the ability to expand and contract as needed and fit nicely. Then I can put the back of the drawer on with a little bit of tapping. It uh, wiggles down in place and I have a drawer ready for clamp up. Use eight clamps. Um, I put it off of the tails so I don't actually clamp right on the joint, I clamp right beside it. I don't have much of a problem with it uh, twisting or deforming or anything like that. It's a fairly straight process with eight clamps and uh, yeah, works really well. The last thing I needed to do before actually fitting the drawers was install these slides that go on the, um, the far ends of the dresser. Because there isn't a uh, divider or anything in the carcass, I just need something to actually frame out that side. So I put it in place, mark it, and then cut it to length. Uh, a fairly straight pro straightforward process if you've done anything else in this so far. And then I will plane it down um, so that the mating sides are smooth, as well as making sure it's the exact thickness that it needs to be at that particular point of the dresser so there's a smooth transition from back to front. As you can see, the drawer above this one I've already done, and uh, it just creates a slide so that the drawer doesn't want to um, slide into that void beside it. And I don't really need to clamp this, I just friction fit it and the glue um, allows it to, uh, to sit nicely in place and uh, holds it until it's ready to go. At this point I can uh, test the drawers. Uh, most of them need a little bit of tweaking to make them fit in all the way. This one is a, a bit uh, tight on the sides so I can bring it back over to the bench and smooth it down with a smoothing plane and bring it to its final um, smooth dimension. I also do this on the top and bottom rims making sure that there's a little bit of space top and bottom so that it has expansion and contraction for the future. But uh, this is the final smoothing um, before finishing on these drawers so I make it look and feel nicely. Then uh, before the very end I'll just hit the face with a cabinet scraper because it is such a wild grain. Uh, I find the scraper does fantastic. Um, I have used a plane on it but uh, for this particular one, cabinet scraper was the way to go. And there you go, sliding drawer on for the finish.
This is turning out to be an immensely fun project to me. I am really having a lot of fun and uh, getting these drawers working and functional uh, has really been a, uh, a little bit of a challenge. It's a little bit different from what I normally do and it's something I'm just kind of having fun with working with. Um, I do have a lot more to do in the next few videos. I'm going to be showing uh, cleaning them all up, uh, fixing the tenons, uh, putting in epoxy into the fronts and making them all nice and smooth um, and getting some of the other details, probably putting the hardware on. Then I'm going to have another video on building the top for this. Uh, that should be a, a fairly quick, simple video. I might be doing some carving in that, so we'll be looking forward to that. Uh, and then I'll have a final video on the finish and actual smoothing of it. One video I'm thinking about doing is actually going around this and pointing out all the little imperfections and showing you here's a little gap and there's a little gap and this is something I didn't like and this is something I'd like to do better. Um, I think that'll be something that uh, will be very beneficial to other people who are interested in this kind of construction and fun. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe. Also, you can see the rest of the build up here and some other videos I have going on. I do want to say an incredible thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why this channel keeps going. If you'd like to find out more about that, you can find the link right over here. And until next time, have a wonderful day.